Thank you very much, Cliff and uh, Eleanor. Um, welcome to the uh, members of the Board of Nature Canada, to the founding members of Women for Nature, and of course everyone else here who's a distinguished guest. I'm very pleased to be with you today. Celebrations are both a time to reflect and a time to look forward. Today, as we celebrate the 75th anniversary of Nature Canada, the oldest national nature conservation charity in Canada, bravo. I want to acknowledge so many far-sighted individuals who have worked diligently over the years to give nature a voice and to connect Canadians with nature. There are so many moments to recall in the course of 75 years. And I've just chosen one today to reflect on because it's the one that is perhaps most known to me and one which I remember a good deal about. In the late 80s, we faced mounting evidence that the environmental web that sustains all life was unraveling. Species and their habitats were disappearing at an alarming rate and the international community mobilized to negotiate a legally binding treaty to help reverse this loss. It was nothing less than a convention about life on Earth. Of course, such powerful rhetoric was in abundance as 156 countries signed the document at the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development in Rio in 1992. That moment was one of great promise for so many of us. Certainly it was not the first international environmental agreement, but this one had a breadth and depth of understanding that set it aside. It placed the conservation of biodiversity within the context of sustainable development. It articulated an ethical imperative of fair and equal sharing of benefits and asked all countries to make an investment in our collective future. The pages of history will document the far-sighted work of scientific panels, the persistence and dedication of non-governmental organizations, and the passionate leadership of many activists and analysts in Canada and abroad. So fast forward to the present. It may still be too early to assess the impact of that particular convention, but we do know that all the evidence we have points to a future of instability and surprise. We now know more than ever that tampering with the Earth's life support systems is a dangerous game. And we don't yet seem to understand how to avoid a collision between growing ecological pressures, significant challenges to social cohesion, and economic expansion. To be charitable, sustainable development, at least as envisioned in 1992, remains a work in progress. So as Nature Canada looks to the next 75 years, there is no shortage of items on the agenda. Biodiversity is a term not yet, not yet well understood by our citizens. Yes, we can conjure up examples of endangered and exotic species or safaris and vacations in tropical forests, but there's incomplete recognition of our total dependence on the critical interactions between genes, species, and habitats. And that's all biodiversity. As the world becomes increasingly urban, how can we encourage cities and local authorities to play such an important role in creating and maintaining healthy ecosystems within those urban areas? The impacts of climate change are already being observed from coral bleaching, melting of glaciers, shifts in habitats, inability of certain species to adapt. So how can we strengthen the resilience of those ecosystems? And even more significantly, 
with its capacity to recreate nature and even change what it means to be human. Science and technology are now confronting us with moral dilemmas and profound choices that will require even deeper global dialogue and greater systemic thinking than we've ever been able to achieve. At the same time, we have an opportunity to put aside the politics of polarization and to really be the architects of a participatory process that really engages citizens in a meaningful way. Well, it's clear that Nature Canada is looking ahead. And I can say with some inside knowledge that in Eleanor Fast, you have an executive director who will not only be a guardian of your glorious past, but will also be a champion to maintain future momentum. This evening, we also celebrate Nature Canada's newest initiative, Women for Nature. As you've heard, it's a collective partnership of 75 accomplished women who honour the legacy of Mabel Frances Whittlemore's passion for nature. They have pledged to champion Nature Canada's efforts to inspire young people to become leaders in the movement to preserve and conserve nature. And I fully believe that that's what's going to give real vitality to Nature Canada's work. I'm proud to be a founding member of this initiative, uh, an invitation which I accepted with enthusiasm some time ago. Thinking of our children's future brings to mind the words of John Muir, the founder of the Sierra Club, when he said, everybody needs beauty as well as bread, places to play in and pray in, where nature may heal and cheer and give strength to body and soul alike. Finally, a most sincere and grateful thank you to the Board of Directors for choosing me as this year's recipient of the Douglas H. Pimlot Award. I'm humbled to be considered worthy of this esteemed award and honored to find myself in such distinguished company of past recipients. It's a splendid award. As the Queen's representative in this province and on behalf of the people of Ontario, I congratulate Nature Canada on 75 years of protecting our precious natural heritage. And I too applaud the members, volunteers, partners, sponsors and supporters who have so generously devoted their time, their talents and their energies. There is an enduring legacy to your work at Nature Canada because you continue to remind us that it is within our power to walk much more lightly on this earth. Merci. Have a wonderful evening.